So I got a request sometime this week to create duplicate on, on how to create duplicate entries in Excel. In other words, I want to take the values in A and make duplicates of them in Excel uh, the number of times that is specified in column B. There are many ways you can do this, but the easiest way and the most straightforward way to do something that is not repetitive uh, to a certain extent is just, well, let me show you, let me show you, uh, follow along and you'll see. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to sort this in ascending order, and I'll tell you the reason why I'm doing that in a moment. So let's go to sort. Uh, I'm doing sort from A to from Z to A actually, but I'm going to do a custom sort because what I want to do is I want to sort by number of tickets and I want to sort from the largest to the smallest. Now, because I've selected the two cells, it's going to keep the values together so that the names and the numbers will be sorted together as one row. So there I go. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in these columns over here and create a formula that duplicates the names based on the number of tickets that they have purchased. So let's say, uh, first of all, I know that the highest number purchased is 12. So I'm going to go one, two, three. In Excel, once you give it a pattern, you can autofill the rest of the numbers because it knows what you're trying to do. So 12. Now I'm going to create a formula here. And the idea is to have Jeff show up 12 times and Bob show up eight times and so on and so forth. And then when it's done, I'm going to stack the values on top of each other. Now, what I love doing in Excel is creating efficient formulas that I can use once. So let's do the first formula. I'm going to use an if statement to check whether uh, or how many tickets we have. So if I'm going to open the bracket, my logical test is check if Jeff uh, number of this number up here is less than or equal to the number of tickets purchased. Because if it is, then I want to output Jeff. So because all the numbers are going to be less than or equal to 12, I'm going to have Jeff show up 12 times. Now, what I want to do is, if that is true, if it's less, print Jeff. Otherwise, leave a space. And I'm going to use two of that to indicate that I want a space to be there. Close the bracket. When I press enter, you see that the formula works. Now that's the only formula I need. And what I'm going to do is modify that formula so that I can co co um, copy it across and down. And you can do that using something called relative and absolute formulas in Excel. L relative and absolute address. Right now, Jeff is in column A2, is in cell A2. This is a relative address because when I copy the formula across, those markers, pay attention to the um, purple, the red, and the green up there, they're going to move across. So if I take this formula and copy it, my references have changed. They've moved across one because I'm using what is called a relative address. So I'm going to use uh, absolute address instead or a variation of absolute addressing. And you make an address, oops, control Z, I accidentally deleted that. You make an address uh, absolute or permanent in Excel by putting dollar dollar in front of it. So dollar D dollar one makes that uh, address uh, absolute. And you can also make columns absolute and rows absolute. You'll see that in a minute. So double click in here. If you do function F4 on some computers or just F4 on others, it puts a dollar dollar sign for you so you don't have to type it. Right now, D1 is an absolute address, but I don't want the D to be an absolute address. That formula is indicating row one. I want all the values in row one to be preserved, but as I'm moving from column to column, I want the references for the column to change. So I'm gonna put press F4 a few times to remove the dollar in front of the row number and put it in front of the columns. Uh, oh, actually, I'm, I've made a mistake there. Put the dollar in front of the row number because I want row one to be absolute uh, address in the first 
part of the formula, but the columns can change. You'll see what I mean in a minute. Go to B2 and I'm going to do F4. For this one, I want the column to be B. So when I'm copying the formula, I want it to be B, but when I move down to row three, I want the value for Bob, which is eight. So now I'm going to make the column permanent, but not the row. And then for A3, same thing. I want the column to be permanent because I want to check for Jeff and Bob and Folu as I'm going along, right? But I want the rows to change. So I'm going to press F4 and F4 again to put the dollar sign in front of the columns. Now I have a formula that can be copied across columns and down as well. So that's Jeff. I move the formula down. It's done it for Bob. Everybody appears at least once. So I expect the first column to be filled. Now, if I move it across, it's only the values that show up two or more times. If I move the formula across, is the values that have three or more. And because I've sorted them, they progressively get shorter. And that's what I do. I get. So Bob is in eight columns and Jeff is in 12 and da, da, da. And that's how you create multiple versions. Now, for the person who asked me, I'm going to stack the values on top of each other. I know it works because Bob shows up 12 times. Uh, Jeff shows up 12. Bob shows up eight. Folu shows up seven. And, and Emily only shows up one. So I know this formula works. Now, what I'm going to do is just stack in. The formula is done. I don't need it. I'm going to copy everything. I, I, every time I create my formula, I like to paste the values without formula when I start manipulating things, right? So I'm going to, I, I selected everything, pressed Control C to copy everything. Now I'm going to go to a new sheet. I'm going to take that file. I'm going to right click and I'm going to paste only the values without any formulas. So now I've got all of the values paint pasted in here, no formulas at all. Can you see? So I can manipulate those values and send them back. All I want to do is stack. There's already data there because when I wrote the formula, I put a space and that's fine. So, uh, okay, that's fine. I'm okay with that. I'm going to take this. I'm going to move it, stack it. And basically that's all I'm doing. And for those of you who don't know how to drag data, you could basically do a copy and paste, control X, go here, control V, paste it, done. It was, so that's the end of today's uh, tutorial. Hope you enjoyed it. See you next week.